shall we take uh, oh Christian? Uh, I'm I'm fancying Christian. Let's jump into that. Yeah, yeah. That one's just popped up while I was reading those notes, and I thought, yes, we'll have that one. Christian, how are you? I'm doing quite well, and I'm speaking to whom? Uh, you're speaking to Richard and Ben. All right, pleasure to meet you, Richard and Ben. Um, so <laughs> it may not surprise you, but I'm a Christian, um, shocker. And I'm a first-time caller, and I just had a simple question. Maybe we can branch off and other stuff, but... I wanted to get a grasp on, you guys are obviously atheists, you've probably read the Bible, you don't believe the New Testament is correct, right? Yep, pretty much. All right, uh, right, okay. So my question is, like, how did you deduce that? Like, what kind of standard did you apply to the, like, let's say the four Gospels, for example, like, what standard of evidence did you kind of apply to the text to see if they're unreliable. Okay, I'll let Ben go first, because Ben is a former Christian, so... I'll, yeah, uh... um, I mean, awesome. the big thing awesome. here too isn't... I think the way that you're approaching this question uh, is as if we have the burden of proof to disprove the Gospels, but that's not how I look at it. I don't think that's the way Richard looks at it either. Um, so we take the approach initially of, I don't accept it to be true, and what is the evidence that tells me that it is? Like, what improves my confidence level that, that what I'm reading is true? So I'm starting from a baseline of uh, not believing. So I'm not taking a positive position and saying that I can absolutely disprove uh, what's in the New Testament. But I am taking a position that I, I'm not convinced that it is true. And, and I'm not saying, like, when oh. I say true or not, I mean... Um, like there, there are certain aspects within the Bible that probably are true. Like there's probably true things mixed into it, but as a whole, uh, mm -hmm. I'm not convinced that the new Testament is the word of God and that all of it happened yeah. and that it's inerrant. I don't accept those claims, sure. but I am open. Sure, sure. I am open to convincing evidence, um, that would yeah. convince me that this, this is, and some things that really okay. get me about the New Testament, especially the Gospels. Um, mm -hmm. My confidence is already shaken just by who wrote these Gospels, what time frame were they written. Um, there's them? inconsistencies among them. What about that? Uh, the evidence that yeah, we about, have it, for, like, for the Gospels. And when? Yeah, they, they yeah, are, have about not about. been, there's not good evidence saying that these were eyewitness accounts and that these were probably written much later than the actual time of Jesus. And so looking at these, uh, these gospels, can I, can I stop you really quick? I, yeah. Yeah. Can I stop you really quick? What? Yeah. Um, to my understanding, most historians as it were would agree that it's like the latest gospel John is like 60 years after Christ died, but most of, Let's say Mark was written in 55. Um, Acts was written in. Mark was. Wait, hold on. No, okay, let no. me stop you there. Wait, wait, where are you getting 55 from? Because most uh, most uh, people who kind of study this uh, would agree that Mark was written around 70, and that is the earliest of the four gospel accounts. So I'm, I'm interested where you're getting 55 uh, from. Was, uh, yeah, I thought Matthew was written in 70. No, Matthew was written in a range, uh, well, the, the the widest range is 70 to 110, but most scholars think it was 80 to 90. All right, I haven't heard that. Mark, Mark was um, the first written at 70. Uh, Luke and Matthew were based on Mark, uh, scholars think. So uh, it, that was the earliest, and, and most scholars think it was written well, around Matthew 70. Was, well, 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 let me, let me backtrack really quickly, because I don't want to get... I would like to talk about this, but my question is still like, so you're saying that you, you started off from the position that you correct me if I'm wrong, start from a position that either you're not convinced that God exists or is it the position that God's not real and you're, then you're going into it. Like which is it that I'm you're not convinced starting, or is it that you're taking the negative position? I'm not, I'm not convinced. I'm not taking okay. uh, the position that there is, no god um i'm taking the position uh -huh. that there 
I'm not convinced of one. But with yeah. regard to the New Testament, there is some evidence mm -hmm. that make me less likely to take a positive position that it is the word of God. Okay, cool. So going back to my question, like what, um, mm -hmm. so the standard that you, you went to kind of use to judge the reliability of the documents was dating, as you said, um, reliability of authorship, I guess you're questioning who, who wrote them. Oh yeah. I, I definitely question Among the reliability of authorship of the entire, of the entire Bible even. Fair enough. Well, why? What like for the for the gospel specifically? What what do you have a question about? Well, we don't know who wrote them. Like in terms of who wrote it. Um, yeah, we we don't really know. Well, we and know Paul wrote most. We, we don't. Paul wrote like half of it. Uh, Paul didn't. We don't know that Paul wrote know. the gospels. The gospels aren't attributed to Paul, You're... but attributed to Mark, Matthew, Luke, no, and John. No, no, no. Um, no, I'm not talking about. No, I'm sorry. I'm not talking about the gospels. I'm talking about New Testament. Okay. Paul, okay. Like, yeah, fair enough. Act, well, not Acts, but Romans and the Epistles. That's like half of the New Testament right there. And we know Paul of Tarsus probably did exist. Wait, the it, we know he existed, but a lot of things that he said, do we, do we know, like his, his road to Damascus trip, do we know that that actually happened? Mm -hmm. Or is that just like Paul on an acid trip? Like we, there's so, I have so many questions. Well, do we have, like a lot, do we have of, a lot of the New Testament acid, relies on you. Relies, it's just assertions by Paul. Like if we're going to go with, uh, with Paul's letters, a lot of what he says is just how do we know any of that happened the way that he said it, it did? A lot of what he says happened without other people around. Like even when you have the the New Testament, it's interesting. The New Testament, I, I hear this claim from Christians a lot, and I used to believe this that the the Bible was credible, and especially the New Testament was credible because of its reliance on eyewitnesses. But you look at the history of the New Testament, That's part of it, yeah, and there's actually not a lot of evidence of eyewitnesses to most of what happens in the new testament so that's that's kind of taken off the table if, if Are you sure? we don't well, have we well, don't I have would, so have, what evidence do that. we have for these why why would you question that i would question the reliability of well i would question your questioning of the reliability of the uh the eyewitnesses first of all in terms of um paul of tarsus he didn't just have like he didn't just have the encounter in Damascus and was like, oh my gosh, oh Christian, I'm going to preach. Like what he did first was he went to remember Stephen and James and they talked for 13 days and he interviewed them and I think a couple other people then went to preaching. So he didn't just go willy nilly, you know, ya you know, Yahoo. Well, after so, but couldn't, days. couldn't I, if I had an acid trip and I said that I saw eyeballs on my ceiling and that like I went to heaven and came back and all this stuff, and like, I knew I had an acid trip. Like, couldn't I tell if I saw Richard be like, hey, Richard, yeah, this thing happened. I'm absolutely convinced that this is real. And then if Richard was, you know, had some reason to to go along with it or, mm -hmm. or thought I was serious, like th there's things that can happen that aren't necessarily but exactly they, they the way that they... Parties. It What's doesn't, that, that doesn't mean that it... That's it, irrelevant. It, that doesn't mean that it happened the way that Paul said it happened. Like how many times have you listened to somebody tell a story about something that happened in their life? And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, no, that sounds pretty legit. And then you talk to somebody else that that like was in that encounter and they say, well, no, this part of the story is actually this way. This is actually what happened. Like go to any like uh, traffic accident scene and you'll get multiple different stories mm -hmm. and that's a, a very mundane event right yeah. like if somebody says that's yeah no i was actually driving well. i was actually driving 20 miles an hour like i was being totally safe and the other person says no actually this car came barreling at me at 75 miles an hour and like people get things wrong whether intentionally or unintentionally and so merely somebody yeah. saying oh, that yeah, this yeah. thing happened is not enough for me to be convinced and that's what we see a lot like paul says a thing and people believe the thing. It doesn't matter how many people believe the thing or how many times Paul has said it or to who he has said it. That does not tell me anything about its validity. Uh, fair enough. I, it would have to be, for me, how I see it is I would have to have sufficient reason to doubt it. Um, so why, why are, in, in uh, let's, ad let's address well, your, really, let's address really, your approach of, there. I, and I think Richard wants to jump in sure. here because I, I, 
I'm yeah, confused well, personally by by your your uh well I don't have enough reason to doubt it. Do you start off with the idea that everything is true? I'm sorry, I'm I promise I'm gonna no, let I do take not. this over, but no, I do not do that. I've talked a lot. I'll let I'll let Richard take this this part. Okay, so on, on that point, <laughs> following on from ben, Ben's point, if you don't start off from the position of everything is true, what is it that convinces you that this particular thing is true? So you're asking me what, like what standard I approached the Gospels and the New Testament? Yeah, what, 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 what convinces you that this is true? Okay, yeah. No, 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 that's a good question. Um, well... It's kind of a, I would say some kind of multitude of things. So, and this is to my understanding, I, I look into it a little bit, I'm a casual, but um, there is the fact that the idea that Jesus rose from the dead happened just about almost instantly after he died, um, which means that it's not like two generations removed and it's like some weird myth that's like long after everyone involved died, it's like, if you know anything about First Corinthians, you know fifteen. But okay, so let me stop you there. Let me stop you within, there, because we 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 we're already disagreeing on that point. Because what oh, evidence yeah. are you what, using what to it? substantiate that point? How do you mean? What evidence would make you specifically? What no about yeah, well, Jesus's resurrection? What what evidence substantiates that point for you? That it was resurrected. Oh, I didn't even. At all. Oh, no, no, no. I got you. I, I didn't even get into that yet. I, I said, what I said was there. I said after he died. I didn't even say after he resurrected. I said there has like almost immediately after he died, not died and resurrected. Almost immediately after he died, it was believed that he rose from the dead. And then I talked about. So the, the, the rising from the dead is the resurrection. So what yes, is it, it is. that yeah. makes you think? that that occurred, that we have a testimony or the, that, that we have evidence that mm -hmm. that occurred as soon as he died? Um, well, I guess I'll, I'll continue with talking about the standard then because that will answer that question. Um, so what convinced me that Jesus rose from the dead was seeing how early the idea that he did rise sprung up, number one. Number two, I believe that the eyewitnesses are reliable for, it's kind of twofold because there are a lot of unintentional co like harmonizations and kind of um, filled in blanks that one gospel may not write. Okay, in let's stop. Because, let's, let's stop on there. I'm not, I'm not interrupting you. I promise I'm going to let you speak on those two things. I just don't no, want no, to get too far in front of no us. Problem. So on, on, on no the problem. idea that, uh, you know, we have evidence that from pretty much the time that it occurred, when is the earliest evidence yeah. we have that, um, that Jesus the... died and rose from the dead? Hmm? From, that Jesus yeah, died and yeah, rose yeah. from the dead. What is the earliest evidence that we have? Let me let me clarify. The earliest, you're, you're asking the earliest evidence that he rose from the dead or the earliest evidence that people believed he rose from the dead? Because I can answer the second one pretty easily. Well, I mean, the thing is, it's the same thing, isn't it? The unless, unless you see a difference between those things. Well, just the, the, people, well, I'm saying just because people believe it doesn't mean, like, I'm not, I'm not even, get, I'm not even touching yet, like whether he did or not. I'm, I'm just. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I misspoke. Sorry, I misspoke. Uh, yeah, I, I understand now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah. We're, we're going on. So I, we're going on the belief that people had okay. that he rose from the dead. Fair enough. Yeah. Sorry, my fault. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. I so. Got you. Yeah, you're good. Um, so I heard, um, and I looked into it a little bit, like the Apostolic Creed, First Corinthians 15. Um, I don't remember the exact quote, but it's like Jesus, you know, lived, died, and rose again according to scriptures, and rose on third day according to scriptures, whatever. Um, I, I have a Bible next to me, but I don't, I don't need to open it. Um, it's very simple. And so why people like... Um, I forgot who exactly says it, but why, why some scholars believe that it's really recent after Christ died was because Paul said, I, you know, he's talking to the, um, the Corinthian church. It's his first letter to the Corinthian church, first Corinthians. And that was 
oh gosh, I think like 60 AD. But he said in the letter to the Corinthians that he got it beforehand, which is yeah. before 60 AD. And the people that he got that, it that, from, I mean, that I still forgot, leaves a period of 30 that. years. That's still, I mean, at the, the dates I have for that, for First Corinthians, Corinthians 15, are actually 53 to 55. So let's go with mine, which yeah. is actually better for you. That That's still... 23 sure. years after the death of Jesus. So Paul heard this at yeah. some point in the inter interim period of 23 years, but we don't know which point. We just know that there was... I believe, there was... That, we, I believe that we do. I, I need to... I think the uh, person was Gary Habermas, actually, but uh, he, he has made several lectures about this. Um, I don't remember it completely, but um, he he has a good chain of of inferences to strongly infer that First Corinthians fifteen, the Apostolic Creed, was within one year um, of Christ. I've never heard that date given. <laughs> I have never heard that date I, given. Oh, we, oh, well then, yeah. I mean, I, I would I would check out I would check out Gary Habermas. Um, I mean, he, that that he, seems very uh, very very time. liberal date given for that event. Uh, I, I certainly, I certainly would agree with you that the creed was present when Paul wrote First Corinthians fifteen because he addresses it. But no, no. I, I'm, yeah, I'm no, not no. sure where the date from one year comes from. So let's kind of move on from from uh, that and go to the eyewitness sure. accounts then, because we kind of agree on that. Sure, I, sure. I mean, I wouldn't agree on the, but we both agree that uh, Paul wrote mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 15, and it was based on an earlier creed. But let, right. let's move on to the to what you think is convincing about the eyewitness accounts. All right. Um, so I believe that the eyewitness accounts are reliable because, and I, I'm sure you've heard this before, but one, one reason is definitely the criterion of embarrassment. I'm sure you've heard that. Oh, sorry, right. say that again. Criterion of embarrassment? That. Have you heard that before? Of embarrassment? I'm not sure if I'm hearing you correctly. Yeah. Criterion of embarrassment. Okay, go on. So talk me through that one. Yeah, so the criterion of embarrassment is one kind of tool, so to speak, that... Um, historiographers use to determine how valid a text may be. It's not like a totally jumped conclusion, but basically the premise is like, if, if a, an account that claims to be historical includes aspects of a narrative that are like inconvenient or embarrassing to be characters involved, then it leads credence to the fact that it's trying to stay as a true to life kind of depiction of the events. Why? So an example of that in the in the New Testament, like in the yeah, Gospels go specifically, would be, yeah, I could cite a few. Like um, Richard, I don't know, I don't know when was the last time you read the Bible, but in the in the Gospels, kind of ubiquitously, like basically all of the disciples were like complete idiots until after Jesus rose from the dead. And like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure where you're getting that from, but go on. <laughs> No, no, yeah, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll explain that later. I'm being funny. I'll, I'll be funny. But basically, <laughs> like, at, until after Jesus rose from the dead, like, the disciples had no idea what Jesus was talking about. They were like, is he really God? Or, like, is he, like, kind of, you know, is he the other, some other messianic kind of prophet? Or, like, okay, what, yeah, you know, I get what's you. going on? And I get where you coming from. It yeah. was after, yeah, then it was after Christ rose and they saw him. They were like, oh, you are God. Wow, you know. And then even Thomas was like, oh, I still don't believe and then he believed later. But um, another example would be... So, uh, so why should we believe Jesus. that claim? Why should we believe that particular claim that they didn't know that uh, he was God until after that? Because don't forget, these eyewitness accounts we have in the Gospels are the very mm. things that this thing is written in. So what do we have to suggest that that is true in of, in of, in of itself? Well, it's not to say that it's true. It's not, well, like like I said earlier, like it's it's a way that you can infer that. Oh it, yeah. Okay. Again. Again. I, 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 I right. apologize for that. That's my wording, which is not very good. Go on. No, you're all good. You're all good. 
Another example um, of the criterion of embarrassment would be like, um, I would say one of the first chapters of the Book of Mark, where, like, I think it was like Mark three or whatever, where Jesus is like Jesus's brother James, um, and and the rest of his family too. They thought that he was like insane, like, and they were trying to drag him back home, you know, instead of preaching, because they thought that he was just a kook. You know, just being insane. again, but these okay. Let me stop you there because oh, yeah. both of these examples you're giving me from within the Gospels, and yeah. the the kind of thing yeah, we're trying absolutely. to get to is why the eyewitness testimony itself is useful, and the eyewitness testimony is the all the Gospels. So you you kind of yeah, I mean, it's kind the, of evidencing itself. Go it's go not is it's internal consistency isn't like an external mm -hmm. criteria we can use to verify it is it we could go to the quran and we could do exactly the same thing we could go to the tipitaka in buddhism yeah, or the vedas yeah. in hinduism oh, yeah. and do the same thing oh, the so how how how, yeah, how do yeah, we get yeah. in it because you said you were convinced by the new testament by the gospel accounts so what it is what is mm -hmm. it externally that convinces you about them the internal consistency is can't be used as a good measure to uh, explain why you were convinced that they were true in and of themselves because otherwise you'd also believe the quran or you'd believe the uh, vedas or you'd believe harry potter yeah, was true or that. the lord of the rings well i'd have to i'd have to give more more reasons to my standard then but yeah. as i said as i said the first time like the the criteria of embarrassment is like it's not because they're embarrassing stories that it's true like i never said that i said that it's it's a way that you can infer that the account is probably more true to life than it would be otherwise because they're not trying to like glam it up so to speak and be like oh they're trying to cover their tracks you know but um, but i mean but along with that like couldn't couldn't if you were planning to write a story that you wanted to use to convince people like isn't yeah. that a literary tactic that people would know about like yeah this is the point i was trying to get to yeah Oh, okay. Uh, I, I apologize, Richard. This, I is, get that. this um, comes under un internal consistency. Would... Just because it's internally consistent, mm. well, it's, well, it's not really evident. quick. Really quick, Ben. Uh, I, I would I would question that because one, the the purpose. If I if like let's say if me Christian, like if I'm trying to start a new religion, I want it to be successful. So having embarrassing stories like women finding the tomb or whatever, empty, blah blah. blah that would lower my reputation because, and that actually was something that people, you know, in the first and second century who were against the church, that's something that they attacked. Like, Oh, women found the tomb first. Oh, it must not be true. Uh -huh. You know, it's like that it would lower my reputation to deliberately make my fish, like my written in situation less credible, quote unquote. But does that um, make and also it second, true? That would imply, well, really quickly, the second part to that is like that would also imply that the like let's say Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the rest of the twelve that would also imply that they had something to gain by recording the New Testament, which I mean I highly doubt. Which we it could, could but we be. don't know they yeah, wrote the don't... things. That comes back to that. We don't know that they wrote the things, and and, and... We're, we're talking about the kind of uh, that that particular idea. We've got a story in the Buddhist scriptures where Devadatta is going around talking about, uh, is causing a schism in what's called the Sangha, which is a Buddhist community. And and that has the same kind of thing where they, if they were trying to convince people that was true, they wouldn't do that mm. to, because it, it kind of shows that it's, you know, that there's a division there. And you don't want to do that if you want to convince people it's true. You want to talk about a strong combined community, yet they openly reported this schism within the community that Devadatta was trying to mm. uh, start. So that in itself doesn't show that Christianity is true because, like I said, we find these things in other religious disciplines as well. So we can kind of, oh, as a standalone yeah, piece of evidence, we can throw that one away. It's, it's, it's not. It doesn't show that Christianity is unique, having that criteria. Well, it's not about. Well, I wouldn't. I, I would watch the language about throwing it away. It's not like I'm not saying. I'm not saying you should throw it away, and I'm not saying the other extreme, like oh, just believe it just because of that. I'm saying it's a cumulative case, like all, like these compounding factors. 
But as part of the cumulative case, we should throw it away because it doesn't show that Christianity is true. It's because we've got examples of it in other religions. So we can say, well, that's not very good to form a cumulative case that Christianity is true because this one particular piece of evidence we have, we know exists in other religions. Mm -hmm. So let's say, okay, maybe throw it away might be a bit strong. Let's set that thing aside because we're not saying it, it's not there. So let's just set that aside mm -hmm. as part and move that from the cumulative case. That's no well, longer part well, of the cumulative me, case. Let me, let me posit this. Instead of saying, let's set it aside, let's say, let's keep them both on the table and let's test it with the higher standard, right? Which is what I'm going to get into next. So, okay, go on. Yeah. you know, as I, said, as I said earlier, like the, um, and I, I'm pretty sure that most historians believe that John the Baptist existed in some form or another. Not that John wrote the book of John, but um, like the new, the, the whoever the 12 were, whoever wrote the New Testament, I mean, I know they had nothing to gain because they, you know, died and were persecuted. Um, and they wrote with like, you know, they wrote with the, I well, believe that can, they wrote with the intention. That, that's a whole argument how, that, I mean, we can go well, down yeah. a whole, whole tangent of, of that but like the, the whole they had nothing to gain because they were persecuted and died like is not a good argument because i know i know we we go through this come? frequently but think about people in islam like do you think people in islam mm -hmm. who die for their belief like if they actually believe what they're doing do you think that islam is true because those people died for their beliefs oh well i mean yeah i mean i i i get that that's kind of a this that's kind of a. So it's not a good argument because, to use. Well, I would say it's not. I would say that that line of thinking is kind of a little bit fallacious because it's like remember the New Testament writers, they're in the first How century it? as these events happen. So it's like the people around the communities around them would have known if it's a lie. They would have known if it's a lie. But and there were people probably in Islam. Who, who, we're not just talking lie. about the. We're not just talking about the nine eleven bombers. There are people in Islam. Who uh, Muhammad mm. is said to have either been involved in or commanded mm. uh, altogether cumulative, uh, cumulatively a hundred battles. So there were people who died in early Islam for what they were believed in. There were people who died in mm. the Buddhist scriptures, and I'm using three three religions on purpose so we've got more than one kind of case to go out. So uh, because mm. of what they believed in, so we've got we've got three three religions and the first three criteria you have given for christian for believing the gospel accounts as true are present in all mm. three of those religions in the earliest forms of those yeah. religions so we've kind of when this is what mm. i'm saying about i'm, I'm not trying to I'm, I'm just aware we've got kind time constraints and i'm trying to get through to see if we've got like a particular thing where we've got some meat to the bones where we can say yeah that's that's something exclusive to christianity you find that convincing mm -hmm. let's call back on another mm -hmm. day and get into the nitty-gritty of that thing you've already given two oh, different things that are example within three different religions sure yeah and then this would so again instead of setting everything aside let's keep them all on the table and let's test with a higher standard so another another thing that I used to deduce that the New Testament, specifically the Gospels, were you know at least somewhat credible was uh, historical accuracy, which would point to the fact that they were written when they alleged to be have been written, uh, where they alleged to have been written, um, dates, times, but does that political figures, things like um, that? But but so does every text that is written at a certain time frame that we can verify to be written at the time frame, does that mean that it's true? No, I'm not saying that any of these make it true. I'm saying it's a cumulative case. Like it leads to- right, So it's it not a good, like, let's just go, just, just bring us the arguments that convince you that it's true. Like, I get that you're going for this cumulative case thing, but like, if each point- Which is what I, how I used to believe that it was true. The like each not, point not is not convincing. Thing, unfortunately, these each of these points is not convincing. So why are you and not them? and Just not exclusive to Christianity? Again, we've got examples in in the Quran of real places and real events well, uh, that we know occurred. Uh, well, with the Quran, I've I've read the Quran, and it's I don't think it holds up to like uh, historical scrutiny. 
actually. I can give you an example. Neither oh, does the okay, Bible. So th this is the thing. The, the criteria the gospel, you're given the for the too. Gospels being standing up to historical scrutiny are the same criteria mm. that is in the Quran. So how why are you saying that that well, doesn't? The, the and this is when the only yardstick we've been using so far actually gives equal merit to both of them. You've given would, three sets of criteria which all the, stand. No, well, I would doubt that conclusion because in the Quran, for example, it makes it makes like let's say it's talking about geography, right? Like it talks about the Valley of Mecca or whatever. You know, it mentions having olive trees. Mecca doesn't have olive trees; it's too dry. What it's probably talking about is Petra you know, in North Africa, right? That's a historical anachronism that you can falsify easily, which takes away credibility from the Quran. With the Bible, for example, like you can, like I can, I'm thinking right no, now. I find it, say, like I find it interesting right. that you you're can, pointing out specific yeah. flaws with the Quran and then only pointing out what you believe to be accuracies in the Bible. Like, I think, how about, can you apply the same level of scrutiny to the Bible that you're also applying to the Quran? Um, well, I hope that I'm not coming across like I'm trying to be biased. I, no, I'm, it it, it I'm does come across Bible, that I way because, to... because what, it, what, what you're doing is you're, okay. you're making all these reasons to hold on to this one book that you want to hold on to. Meanwhile, you're using a separate standard to, to yeah. judge the other books. And that's why we're saying, like, no, your evidence no, no. that you're coming to the table with. Would, would it be fair, equal... Christian? Yeah, Sorry, Ben. Would it be fair, Christian? Really? Would, Christian, would it be fair to, to say mm. in, in yeah. all three of these traditions, we have uh, mm -hmm. some things we know that happened, like we do in the Bible, mm -hmm. and some things we cannot find evidence for happening? Uh, because we've got evidence, we've we've got negative evidence, archaeological uh, archaeological uh, uh, that word evidence in the Bible, where we expect to find things in a certain layer according to the Bible, and it's not there. Mm -hmm. There's lots of work exactly. being done on this. Uh, I don't know exactly. off the top of my head, but this, you can go and have a look in. Uh, oh, okay. There's lots of Old Testament scholarship. I, I'm sorry, I don't I know. I really the top like biblical archaeology, so I'm I'm very interested in that topic. But going back, yeah, I, I want to, I want to, I, I kind of want to reconcile this, <laughs> this, this quandary kind of going on, Dan. It's like, I, I'm not treating it with, I really hope I'm not coming across like I'm treating the Bible with a different standard. It's like, I'm citing an example of how I applied the level of scrutiny and talking about like archaeology and geology to Except, the Quran. And yeah, I get that you're trying not to, to come across as... I get that you're trying not to come across as having that bias, but you are unintentionally implying, like applying that bias. Like you've approached the Quran, about, like the, the way that archaeology, the uh, way that you are approaching the Quran, you should also approach the Bible, and that's what Richard and I aim to do. Like Absolutely. that's why we're starting Absolutely. from a level of of not believing in either of them, and there has to be, like Richard is saying, there has to be something within your your case for christianity yeah. that is going to push us over into into believing that but you're starting from a place of believing in christianity and you've basically said well i don't have enough to convince me it's not true meanwhile you're applying this same skepticism well, that richard now, and i have for is that way no but that's no, no, what you're well, doing okay, like i i, I, I don't know I if you don't the issue is I, hold on really quick. I, I want to clear this up because I, I don't want I don't want you to think that I'm some type of weirdo. I think we're having something very lovely. Dan. We don't think you're weird. No, Look, we we're, we're having a good conversation. We don't think you're weird at we, all. We don't yeah. think you're a weirdo, okay. but it's all just right. there's, right. an right. internal, there's, there's an internal bias that we all have. And like I, I do with certain things and I have, have to have people remind me like, hey, no, your argument is not oh yeah yeah no doubt no, i get that i get like, that all of us have well, to have really that quick, and, really quick and we're not aware we're not aware of of how we think sometimes and i'm just trying to let you know like this this is the argument that you're making this is what you're saying and if it's not intentional maybe you need to go back and reevaluate your argument and say okay maybe i need to rethink my position and that's all we're trying to say is is i i think you no, need no, to no, rethink I your no, position. I get that. no i get that i appreciate that what i'm saying is the, when, I, th I think you're a little bit hung up on like I have no reason to believe it's not true. That's not what I. That's not how I started off as. At first, I didn't believe this stuff, and I just looked into it, and I just came to that conclusion. That's how I believe. That's how I feel now, with the amount of evidence that 
I've come to that I've seen. But when I started looking into the Bible, I started from a position like you of I'm neutral, I'm agnostic to it, I have to go where the evidence takes me. I didn't start if that's from, the case, then Christian, like, I wasn't, if that's I wasn't, the case, and I don't, I wasn't I don't doubt the question that. of like, oh, I believe it's true, therefore the if, assessment is true. If that's the case, so why with the, the the first three sets of criteria you've given us, why are they present in mm. other religions as well? Because if if we if you're coming from a truly impartial point of view, you must say, well, there mm. are some true things and false things in the Bible. There are in the Quran and the Tipitaka. People died for what they believe in people did in the Quran and the Tipitaka. And what was the first one? I can't remember what the first one was because we've been talking for that long. But whichever that one was, also present in the Quran and Tipitaka. So we've taken only three religions, and there are more than three, and I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I would hazard a guess that those criteria would be present in a wider selection as well. But we've taken only three religions. You've given us three sets of criteria, which you said convince you that Christianity is true. And yet... Those three, well, pr those okay. three uh, things are present in those other religions as well. So, what kind of what, what, which one? When are we going to get to one that isn't present well, in the I, other I, religions? I just gave you, oh man, Richard. Like I, I just, I just mentioned early, like five minutes ago. I applied. I didn't even get to how I applied the historical standards for the Bible. I, mean, I will maybe someday, <laughs> but it's that about might be the, a different call. The Quran. I, I gave. I, yeah, it, it'll have to be. I'm sorry, but it be. I gave one example. I could. I could give more, like archaeological yeah, examples. You gave an example of something like, that does that, that doesn't that can I, isn't can I real. Really quickly? Which, can I? Can yeah, I really quickly? Yeah, like I gave. I gave one example of how archaeological scrutiny doesn't hold up to the Quran narrative. Not because I'm biased or anything, but you know it's. How it is to it's some, it's just to some the of the Quran narrative, there are some true things and true some yeah, false yeah. things in the Quran. The same is in the Bible. There is a book called The Bible Unearthed by uh, Israel Finkelstein and someone else. There's Josh, Dr. Joshua Bowen's uh, that. Uh, handbook, atheist handbook to the Old Testament. <laughs> both of both of these books go into the archaeological record and show. The, the stories in the Bible, the archaeology, does not confirm them. And in some cases, there is negative evidence for them. Now, as I said, I can't remember specific examples, but if you have a look yeah, into those right. books, which are really, really interesting yeah, yeah. books, uh, uh, that, they, yeah. and I'm sure there are many, many yeah. scholarship bo books of scholarship on the subject which do the same, yeah. they will show you that if some really things in the quickly, Bible are true, yeah. And some places are real, and some we have no evidence for, just like the example you gave in the Quran. So, again, we've got the yeah, same yeah, sure, criteria I mean, um, over the same religions. That was just one example, though, but okay. Yeah, I, and again, I just gave one example. It's like, yeah, you can't prove the creation account to be true or whatever. It's like, it's poetry. We get it, you know. But going back to the second criterion that I gave, talking about, like, um, the the presidency of the eyewitnesses and the parties involved, whatever, you know, not to pick on the Quran, but I, this is the, the other book I've read the most with the Quran, the, the whole Uthmanic revision, the battle of Yamama, you know, the Quran literally means recitation. It wasn't written down until like hunt, like decades and decades and, you know, the, the, vision, the version exactly that we have now. Exactly the same That's as the New same Testament. As the Bible. <laughs> You mean That's exactly the same. the same as the Bible? Well, that that wants to be a part, yeah. But as I was about to say, as I was finishing, do you know what the Uthmanic revision is? Yes, it's when the uh, the Caliph uh, Uthman uh, got rid of the, the earliest Caliph, copies of the Quran yeah. and uh, yeah, exactly. put the, his favorite yeah. versions in. Yeah. Just, yeah. just for reference, and, and by the way, I've, I've, after that, but... my my degree is in religious studies, religious religion, philosophy, and ethics. So I do study this stuff on like on a daily awesome. basis. So just just for reference, just so you know, I'm not just plucking oh, religions. Yeah, when I talk yeah. about the, when I talk well, about Islam and Buddhism, I'm doing it because I have uh, like a reasonable understanding of those religions, so I can talk on them in as at least as yeah, much no kind of that. depth as I can about Christianity yeah, no as well. So I'm not that, just Richard. kind of pulling stuff out of my ass to throw at you. Oh yeah. I mean I didn't think I didn't think you were Richard, but I I have that 
when I talk about this to some people, I ask them and they're like, no. And so I have to brief. But it's like with a with modern revision or whatever, you know, in the case of the Bible or whatever, the that you know, something to that extent has yet to happen. And there's a chain I feel of custody what you, mean. That you can follow. Like I mean, there were the, the, the I mean, even the mm -hmm. compilation of the New Testament took throwing lots and lots of mm -hmm. books out and deciding which ones fit the orthodox theology, which in the early years was wildly different. There were wildly well, there different were ideas. Than that. Well, well, there are more criteria involved in that. Like one, like, and I, I'm sure you know this, so I'm not saying anything new to you, but you know, there are, there are stipulations involved to determine like whether a book was canon, like was it written by an apostle or an eyewitness? You know, was it accepted by the orthodox community, as you just mentioned? Um, was it yes but this criteria the, was developed by the people about. compiling it this the criteria was the developed by the people compiling it and arguing the theology this is a problem when when it, it's essentially it's essentially a case of the winners writing history so we can say yes there's a criteria that uh, that shows this this and this but that criteria was developed by the people who actually won the arguments if we went, if we went, for example, about the criteria from from the Gnostics, if we take the Gnostics idea mm -hmm. of the kind of uh, the heavens being spheres and each star being contained with its own mm -hmm. within its own sphere and things like that, and they'd have won the argument, we'd have had a completely mm -hmm. different set of criteria. But they didn't win the argument. The people who won the argument won the argument and wrote the criteria that we have to judge it by. Can you not see how this is a problem? Well, the way you put it, yeah, but there's more information than that, right? So it's like, it's not just like, you know, it wasn't just... Why are you, why are you granting and, and, all of these extra steps for the oh, okay. Bible and you're not granting that for the other religions? Like, like, you're definitely, definitely applying different standards for the Bible than you are for the other religions we mentioned. Like, do you not, do you not well, see the problem with do. how... How you're thinking about it? Well, I was about to, I was about to make a comparison between the Quran and the Bible. See, you seem you so seem totally saying, willing to <laughs> to dunk on the Quran, and then like as soon as we bring up exception, like or we bring up arguments about, against the Bible, and your response is, oh, well, but there's, but that's not everything. There's there's more. There's more context and all this stuff. But like, we could. Do the same like Richard and I could yeah, take the position. There, I mean, of, that's just how it is. Yeah, you know, no, but hold on. No, no, but no, Richard and I, Richard and I could take the position of of Islam and make the same statements and saying like, oh, hold on, but you're looking at it from this lens and you're not looking at these other contexts. You're not looking. We can do the same arguments, and I, I'm, I'm kind of stumped by the the fact that you can't apparently can't see how you're doing this the same thing. The problem, I'm unfortunately not being able to finish most of my sentences, Dan. So I, I'm, I'm trying to get there. I, 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 I appreciate the concern and I kind of, I, I know what you mean. I get it. Um, I'm trying to, and I'm trying to look at it from a, a, as unbiased as possible. So just bear with me. Really right. Quickly. But here's, here's the thing. Though, um, I'm sure we like, don't... I, you keep, you okay, keep saying <laughs> over and over <laughs> again, mind, you keep saying over and over again that you're trying to be as yeah. unbiased as possible. And then we point out an area of your bias and you ignore that and you don't change your position. And that's a problem, right? Well, so if, if you have an place. area I'm where you're being time, biased, if you're, in, if you're trying not to be biased okay. and you're called out on your bias, the honest thing to do is to reevaluate your position, right? And I'm not seeing that happen. Or, or I can give more context that supports why I came to the conclusion I did. Yeah, but like, you haven't no, done yeah, that. That's every every thing, piece right? of like evidence context. you keep bringing, we keep mentioning about why that's not sufficient. But then the problem is so, I keep giving, I keep trying to give extra context and then I get cut off. And then I'm like, oh, and then you're saying, oh, I'm being biased and I haven't even given more context that supports why I believe what I do. So it's like, I'm trying to I'm trying to work with you, Dan, and I like you, but we gotta you know 
I, I haven't even gotten most I think, of what I, what I want to say. Yeah, out. I, well, I think I think maybe we need to continue this call on a a different time because I think I think we've gone in a lot of different circles. Uh, and we are way over yeah, time. Yeah, and there there is someone you. else I want to get to yeah. before qu really quickly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Listen, uh, yeah, we're Christian, good. honestly, I have had, this has been a brilliant conversation. I do want to continue this conversation with you. I really, really do. And I, I thank you for your cordiality. Yeah. You've been, you know, it's been a good conversation. There's been no shouting, no raving at each other. It's been all very good. With, uh, yeah, I don't you do know, that type of stuff, man. Good. Yeah. No, 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 and that, no. neither do we if we can help it. So, yeah, it's been a great call. I'm going to let you go, but please, please do call back and let's All continue. Right.